Hey there and welcome to 10 TV Plus. I'm Dylan Robichaud alongside Michael Behrens. What a wacky weather day today. <laughs> We've got the wind. Yep. It's warm out there right now. Feels folks, pretty good. Folks are probably going off to school in their t-shirts and little do they know what's coming <laughs> for the commute home. I mean, we are going to transition away from this warm air and, you know, just a big weather maker. Uh, impacting a large portion of the country. And today. We're going to see about a 30 degree temperature drop from now over the next 12 hours. Wow. And it's all because of this upper level low right here. Take a look for yourself. A very strong and pronounced weather system off to our southwest. And right now we are getting some drier air feeding into the region. Take a look at this though up to Wisconsin and out towards Iowa. They are looking at blizzard light conditions today. And then on the eastern side of it, we are getting severe weather from the mid Atlantic states down to the Carolinas. You can see some of those alerts right now out through North Carolina. Now take a look at this right here with the system. What we are looking at is dry air feeding in and so Right here we have uh, what we call our dry slot. So we got that dry air kind of wrapping around St. Louis and into Columbus. This dry air is feeding in from the south and this is actually cutting off our rain supply. But then you'll notice on the northern side of the low where you see the white on the map, that is some extra moisture. That's going to wrap around like this and move in as we head into tonight. And you'll see exactly what we are talking about here. If we can uh, go ahead and get rid of that one o'clock two o'clock this afternoon, we start kind of dipping into round number two and you'll see some of these showers here moving in as we head towards three and four o'clock. These will be kind of on and off, but rapidly as we head towards seven, eight o'clock, you start getting these blotches of purple and pink showing up on the map. What is that? That is actually a little bit of snowfall mixing in here out towards Logan County, up towards Kenton, uh, where we are looking at temperatures dropping. And like I just said, we are seeing a very quick drop in the temperatures as we head into this evening by eight, nine o'clock. Look at this. Now we're getting a switch over to snow. By the time it is cold enough to snow, we're going to be looking at a lot of the moisture removed from the area. So little to no accumulation and also not to mention as we head towards tomorrow morning, the ground is so warm with temperatures around 60 today. We are talking little to no accumulation out there on the roadways. So be ready for that. Now, as we head off to the east, some of these higher elevations out near Newark and Mount Vernon, they may get a few one hundredths of an inch of snow. That's pretty much it. But keep in mind, uh, this is a computer model and the computer is showing how much will fall just because it falls doesn't mean it necessarily accumulates because the ground and the soil will be pretty warm from all the recent 60 degree weather that we've had. The other piece of the weather puzzle will be the winds. And as we head towards 430 today, as we head off towards a Newark and Marysville down the Washington courthouse, man, we're talking winds 20, 30, 40 miles per hour. They do let up a little bit tonight. And then as we head towards tomorrow, they end up actually picking up yet again. When you wake up at nine o'clock in the morning, winds generally around 30 miles per hour. And then as we head towards 10, 11 o'clock, mid to late morning. Look at this. There could be an isolated gust up and over 40. So the wind is not a one day affair. It's actually two days today and tomorrow that we have to deal with the wind. Then eventually things will improve and we turn over a new leaf as we start to see uh, improving weather late week. So wind gusts here in the metro generally between 20 and 35 miles per hour and those gusty winds will continue as we head towards the evening hours. Just make sure if you're out there traveling or whatnot uh, that you are ready for that. Temperatures over the, the next 12 hours or so. Lunchtime today we sat at 58 degrees, but take a look at this surgence of cold air that we're tracking by 4 p.m. We're down to just 42 degrees, okay? 42 plus you got to factor in the wind, so it's gonna be a whole lot colder than that. And then as we head towards six, seven, eight o'clock, we're down in the mid 30s. So whiplash is what we'll call the weather heading into this afternoon. Severe storms to some extent. Not here in the metro area. The light green that you see are what we call non severe storms. OK, so if you are in the light green, which Columbus is, that means that we're looking at the possibility of maybe a flash of lightning, maybe a, a rumble of thunder. That's pretty much it where you start getting into the green and the yellow. That's where we could possibly see severe storms. And by the definition of that, we're talking winds up to 58 miles per hour and quarter size hail or one inch diameter hail. And that would be off towards Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Erie and even uh, northeast Ohio. So if you are traveling out there, be ready for that. But otherwise, it won't impact us too much here at home. 
heading into Friday night. We have a weak system rolling on in, tracking a few light showers. This is moisture starved though. So there's not a whole lot of energy associated with it, but notice that that front kind of drips on down to the south. And as we head towards Saturday night or Saturday morning before the sun comes up, there could be enough cold air that we get in on a spot flurry or two across the region. After this high pressure builds back in and that is going to change your world heading into this weekend. I want you to look here at Saturday and Sunday. It's a little bit on the chilly side on Saturday. Take a look at Sunday though, 50 sunny. Mm hmm. That's what we're looking at. Not a bad weekend, not at all. Temperatures though, staying above average through the next six to 10 days. And then as we look at precipitation, that will be above average as well, which is kind of good. You don't want to be going into the summertime with a drought. And I don't think that we will have one. So that will be good for us here at home. Now check this out over the next week or so average high 47. Most days will be above that. Look at Tuesday and Wednesday. We are closing in on near 70 towards the middle half of next week. Generally speaking, the trend is upward. Okay. So this right here, March 12th, and then this right here shows that on March 12th will be 18 degrees above average. And so that would put us in the well above average category here for next week. And so we're not tracking any more stints of this really cold air. We're not looking at any more polar vortex outbreaks or anything like that. Generally speaking, we're going to keep the pattern nice and mild. The jet stream is going to be way up here. What does that mean for us? Well, we tap into that warm conveyor belt here and towards the middle to later half of next week. I would not be surprised if a few of you reach 70 degrees. OK, that's because we're going to have a lot of strong southerly wind that will be pushing in that milder air. There's a look right now at the weekend again, Saturday and Sunday. Don't forget to put your clocks ahead an hour. Michael Barron's will be talking more about that here in just a moment. 58 degrees here on Monday, 65 degrees here on Tuesday. It'll be nice and warm going into next week. I don't know about you. I got me some spring fever. I cannot wait for this <laughs> mild air. Yeah, I mean, we are getting back to about that time of the year and it's going to be feeling nice out there. Uh, but I would say don't discount winter just yet. Don't put the clothes away. We always sometimes even late March, early April, we get a few flakes. We get something. Yeah, we're not done with it yet. Yeah, not done with it yet. And you know, Dylan, while things have been kind of windy for us here today and we have been dealing with some rain and thunderstorms in our forecast, other parts of the country have been dealing with much more extreme weather. This is CCTV video from Tuesday that showed a tornado striking the city of Hugo in Oklahoma, stripping the roof from a building in its path. The veterinary clinic, which captured that video, their striking video, said that the tornado had hit the clinic in surrounding buildings. According to the National Weather Service, the tornado reached peak winds of 100 to 105 miles per hour and remained on the ground for about 3.7 miles, lasting for around four minutes. And the path of damage continued over the last 24 hours down in Mississippi. This is video of the aftermath of what is believed to have been a tornado in Wayne County. Early reports say that this storm injured at least four people and three homes were destroyed. Crews are still working to get more details about that storm and the damage it left behind. And it wasn't just tornadoes. The wind has been causing havoc as well. Strong winds knocked the roof off a portion of a jail in Clay County, Mississippi. That happened Tuesday afternoon. Authorities say jailers moved seven to eight inmates to a neighboring building as a result. And on the cold side of the system, blizzard warnings were flying across the Great Plains. This video is from the National Weather Service showing snow coming down and winds howling. While storms have moved further west as of this afternoon, many areas from Iowa to Michigan remained under blizzard warnings as of Wednesday morning. And speaking of this weather, let's take a look at where things were during the midday on Wednesday heading into this afternoon. That threat for severe weather that Dylan was talking about kind of on our eastern counties, much more amplified the further to the south 
and the east. You go of central Ohio, particularly around southern Virginia, down to South Carolina here this afternoon. They're under an enhanced risk for severe weather. That's a level three out of five threat. We were already seeing uh, some pretty active storms forming across the eastern seaboard as of the midday. You can see thunderstorms from Raleigh all the way down to Jacksonville, including some warnings across North Carolina. Watches in place as well, including tornado watches and severe thunderstorm watches as of Wednesday morning. That threat continuing into at least the early part of the afternoon. And then, of course, the other side of the system is the cold side. Heavy snow up from uh, Lake Superior all the way across the UP, down through most of Wisconsin and into Iowa, dealing with a lot of snow from this system. And the winter alerts were flying as well. Uh, you can see here winter storm warnings in the pink blizzard warnings in the red. Again, this was as of midday on Wednesday. Those blizzard warnings went all the way from central Iowa on up into the northern portions of the UP. And like in the forecast for us here, the system will eventually impact us, but not nearly as strongly with the snow impacts. These are some of the radar estimates for how much snow has come down in the last 24 hours. You can see over near places like uh, Minneapolis here, we got possibly a 12 inch radar estimated snowfall total. Another place up here in the UP looking very similar with some of those higher impacts. And again, that is heading at least our way to some degree, a little bit of snow possible in the forecast as we head toward tomorrow. Dylan, it's just kind of that year, that part of the year where we see everything across the country in terms of weather. This time of the year, we get these mid latitude cyclones and they become very robust in March because you gotta figure it now this time of the year, we got spring and winter still kind of fighting mm -hmm. it out. And that's where we start to kind of get into that severe weather season too. Yeah, that severe weather, certainly a sign of the season, sign that springs on the way. And well, another sign, like you were talking about earlier, it's time to move those clocks forward. We're just days away from the start of daylight savings time. It starts at 2 a.m. on Sunday. Phones automatically move, moving to 3 a.m. So you're gonna lose that hour of sleep without even knowing it, but you gotta move the rest of the clocks out there. And if you're tired, all that back and forth. I know I am. I wish we'd just stick on at least one, <laughs> one or the other. I don't care which one. There's been efforts to try to make that the law. There's an effort right now in Ohio to make it year round. The state senator filing a resolution last month. However, keep in mind, this has been introduced in the past several times and has never made it through both chambers. We have been talking about that for the last 30 years. We just need to do it already. I don't know. It takes, the clocks. it takes so long to get anything done in government. <laughs> and we've been talking about this since the so, dawn of the dinosaurs. Yeah, I, I feel like it too. <laughs> <laughs> and now to the latest on the fires from out in the Carolinas. Reports say things are improving, but many areas have been reduced to ashes from what broke out over the past week. Our affiliate News 13 from South Carolina has this report. Throughout the day, it was still hazy, but conditions do seem to be better than yesterday. Now you can still smell the smoke in the area and community members tell me they're in disbelief that what was once their backyard filled with trees and brush is now just a pile of ashes. I spoke with one Carolina forest resident who lives in the farm and was evacuated on Sunday. He told me it was a scary moment, but he was prepared to leave because of the flames and smoke he was seeing. He also said he was here for the wildfire back in 2009 that burned 19,000 acres just off of Highway 31. And while both wildfires were scary to experience, he said this one hit a little closer to home. Uh, while well, this one's a little closer to home uh, and I actually had to get evacuated, so it's a little bit more, uh, you know, I guess scary in a way, but uh, at that moment, I I wasn't involved in the community. I didn't know too much. You know, I recently had moved down here about. So this one has definitely hits home and it's just being part of this community now for so many years. It's just uh, it affects you a little bit different, you know, when, when it's when you've been here a long time. With the possibility of heavy smoke in the area, officials are urging everyone to drive with caution. Now, this is a situation that can change at any moment. So stay aware and stay safe. Reporting in Carolina Forest, Gracie Fusco, News 13. Finally today, let's check out some of the new video into us here at 10 TV. The biggest iceberg in the world appears to have finally run aground in the southern Atlantic Ocean. It was named A23A and spans more than 1400 square miles, slightly smaller than Rhode Island. The iceberg has been drifting around the southern ocean since 2020. And according to the British Antarctic Survey, the iceberg has come to a stop off the island of South Georgia. It's a big old sheet of ice right there. That's crazy. Yeah. That's cool, the time lapse of it. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, you could be on that iceberg and you wouldn't have any idea. It's the size of a state. I know. <laughs> you just think you're on I land. I don't want it to split. Yeah, well, I'm glad it is <laughs> stopped moving. And, you know, those type of things would be dangerous out there for sure. Um, and, well, from the ocean to space, Athena continues to be in excellent health and in lunar orbit. Overnight, flight controllers calibrated Athena's landing navigation cameras, which are designed to autonomously track her position and detect hazards during landing. Athena is targeting a landing opportunity March 6 at 1232 in the afternoon. Live landing coverage is scheduled to start at 1130 on the Intuitive Machines IM2 mission page and on NASA+. Plus. A lot of activity on the moon these I, days. I heard uh, some of the ast astronauts say that because obviously there's no gravity and you're up there for so long, you actually have to keep on working out so you don't lose muscle yeah. mass, which is kind of cool. It's like your full-time job is literally to work out in space. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of work going on up there. Of course, we got the, the astronauts preparing for returns to the moon, eventually possibly Mars. We've got multiple landers going on. It's yep. a cool time to keep an eye on space. Cool time to be alive. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, that does it for us here on 10TV+. Plus. Chief Meteorologist Jerry March will have your forecast tonight at 6 o'clock.